What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Holistic Nootropics YouTube channel, where we discuss using nootropics, biohacking, and nutrition to help you boost your cognition. My name is Eric, and I'm the founder of HolisticNootropics.com. And on this channel, we take deep dives down the nootropic rabbit hole to learn more about specific nootropics, biohacking techniques, nutritional topics, whatever it takes to help you boost your body, boost your brain, boost your life. If you are interested in learning more about nootropics specifically and reading different uh, and learning different ways to boost your brain, boost your body, boost your life, head on over to holisticnootropics.com and you can actually download a copy of my free supplement buying guide. This is a guide that will walk you through ingredient by ingredient on how to find the best quality supplements and nootropics that are on the market today. So today we are talking about the nootropic bromantane. And I see bromantane discussed a lot in the more kind of um, niche specific nootropic deep dark corners of the internet. Um, it's one of those nootropics that, uh, you know, it's a synthetic, of course, but it's not widely discussed in the mainstream. Not a lot of people know about it. Um, but the people who do know about it speak very highly of it. Um, people who have used it, most people who use it seem to have um, really good experiences with it. And so I became curious about Bromantane. I will be fully transparent. I've not tried it myself, um, but it is one of those nootropics that I can see myself using in the future. Um, but I wanted to learn more about it. I really want to understand you know, what is wh like, what is the deal with bromantane? Why, why, why do people, you know, why do people think so highly about it? Uh, and of course there are some people that don't seem to, um, that aren't crazy about it or have used it and have not experienced, um, you know, it, for them, it hasn't lived up to the promise and there's probably some reasons why, but for the most part, it really seems like a great nootropic that you would use to, calm anxiety to deal with, you know, physical, emotional stress. Um, you know, it feels like a nootropic that you would use to feel like an uplifting boost of mood. It seems like a nootropic that would be great to stack with, um, you know, with like other, maybe more kind of natural nootropics. Maybe it would pair well with like an amino acid, maybe an adaptogen, but, um, let's talk about what bromantane is. So in this podcast, we're going to talk about the benefits, the, um, you know, overview of what it is, its history, um, the best way to use it and any side effects to look out for. And of course, everything is time stamped in the description below. So if you want to jump around to find out, you know, specific information you're looking for, you can find that all in the description of the video or the podcast player that you're listening to this on. So, um, you know, what is bromantane? So bromantane, you could really almost think of it like, um, like an adaptogen. It has a lot of those same qualities. This was, uh, this is known as ladastin and it belongs to a family of synthetic nootropics called actoprotectors, which were created back in the 1980s, back in the USSR, uh, Soviet communist, um, uh, the communist Soviet Republic, Soviet Union, Soviet Union. Um, and they devised these really for people that were undertaking stressful jobs. So they were used by the Soviet military, Olympic national teams, rescue workers who actually used these during major, um, major rescue operations, like for example, um, Chernobyl, the Armenian earthquakes and train accidents in Bashkiria. I think I said that right. Um, and the most notable actyl protector actually back then was not bromantane. It was called Bemethyl, and you could still buy that, uh, I believe, at cosmicneutropics.com. Um, and you can buy bromantane off of Cosmic Nootropics. Uh, there's also another company called Swiss Chem that you can buy. Um, that you can buy bromantane from. And I'll list those links down in the comments below so you can, uh, or down in the description below so you can uh, look into that if you'd like to buy some of this. But these active protectors are pretty cool because they, um, you know, they, they work, they, they thrive in conditions of hypoxia. So really high stress, low oxygen situation. So, um, you know, in these sorts of situations, this is where the mitochondria isn't producing ATP because there's no, uh, th there's no oxygen delivery. So, um, you know, you get a lot of this in, um, 
you know, in, in, um, I believe in strength training. Um, I could be wrong about that, but, um, you know, this is like high stress, high functioning situation. So when you think of an active protector, it almost acts as if like an artificial mitochondria coming in and building energy for you in the absence of the mitochondria that won't be working in these high stress situations. So, um, Bromantane, when it was developed, was also used uh, by Russian soldiers to shorten recovery times. Um, but then in the 1990s, Bemethyl ceased production and Bromantane became the dominant active protector. So, um, you know, these work under, again, stressful situations similar to adaptogens. And um, Bromantane itself, it's a derivative of um, adamantane. I believe that's how you say it. And it's technically a cousin to memantine, which is used to treat dementia, memory loss, Alzheimer's, and has kind of a similar mode of action, um, but it does it is distinct in its own way. Um, some things you should know about bromantane. Uh, it's not fully absorbed in the gut. So it has 42% bioavailability. That's why some people think they need to take higher doses, but you actually don't really need to because the, the what, 58% that you do get can be very potent. Um, um, it does cross the blood brain barrier and it's found within the brain within 10 minutes of taking it. Um, peak concentrations of it uh, differ between men and women. Women, you'll get uh, about two and a half hours and men uh, peak concentration, you'll see in about four hours, but um, it can be felt pretty instantly. You know, a lot of people who use it say they can feel it within 30 minutes of taking it, which is true. It doesn't take a long time for it to get there, but I'm talking about peak, like peaking your peak concentration of it. Um, and then it can last for up to eight hours. So this is a thing you probably want to take, you know, if you're going to be, if this is like a thing you need to take for like getting a lot of work done or, uh, you know, some kind of situation where, you know, your body's going to be up against it. You got a big workout coming on. Uh, you probably want to take it a little bit earlier in the day. Um, it's lipophilic. So, uh, you probably want to take it with some sort of fat. So, you know, you could take it during a meal. You could take it with like avocado or some coconut oil or something like that. Um, it has stimulative effects and anxiolytic effects. So, uh, it can stimulate you. Um, but it, uh, it also kind of has the ability to settle your nerves a little bit. So its biggest benefits are that it is, uh, is anti-anxiety, which is pretty cool. Um, it inhibits fatigue. So that's, you know, that's another big thing. So, um, you know, again, stressful situations can wear you at. I talked about this in the adaptogens video. Adaptogens were devised to prolong the resistance phase of this three stages of stress. So this is doing a very similar thing. So, um, you know, you want to kind of beat it to the punch before you get to that exhaustive phase. So this is going to help you prolong resistance before, you know, your stress can be overwhelming. Um, it does, uh, stimulate, it also stimulates liver detoxification via the cytokine, uh, cytochrome P450 synthesis. And the great thing is like for, uh, this is especially important for people who, uh, you know, who might be using like a thing like Adderall or something, get a little bit of that addiction. You don't get, uh, you don't, this doesn't have addictive properties and it actually can be very helpful for people who are getting off of some kind of drug use, substance abuse. Uh, if you are in recovery. Recovery, this can be a very good tool because again, when you're in recovery, when you are quitting a substance, when you're trying to go sober, anxiety and stress is like the top thing that drives you back into, uh, you know, back into substance abuse. So if you are looking for something that's not addictive and can help with addiction, Bromantane can be very helpful with that. Um, and really there are no known side effects with it. And they've tested this all the way up to 600 milligrams per kilogram. Of course, this is in animals. Um, I don't think this has been that the, um, the LD 50 or like the high dosage has been used in human trials. Although there are some human trials that do show its effectiveness. They did not use anywhere near that amount. So, um, you know, it's best to not go too high dose because I don't think you need it, but you should be able to see some results uh, at a little bit lower doses. And we'll talk about the dosages uh, here in a little bit. So what does it do in the brain? This is where things get kind of interesting. So 
in the brain, it's going to stimulate dopamine and serotonin production via the upregulation of tyrosine hydroxylase in the ventral tegmental area, the VTA, and the um, nucleus accumbens. So um, when I say upregulation of tyrosine hydroxylase, tyrosine hydroxylase is the enzyme that basically takes tyrosine, turns it into L-dopa, and then eventually into dopamine. So this is uh, what they call a rate limiting enzyme. So um, I did talk about the issues with tyrosine hydroxylase and some dopamine supplement in another video where if you have a gut bacterial issue like Clostridium difficile, that can hijack your tyrosine hydroxylase enzyme and it could basically make it defective. So if you are somebody who is taking like tyrosine supplements and you're not seeing the increase in dopamine, you might have an issue with your tyrosine hydroxylase enzyme. I'm not saying you do, I'm just saying there might be an issue there. You might not be, uh, there's another uh, enzyme, I can't think of the name of it off the top of my head. It, it's what makes, it turns L-dopa into um, dopamine. But um, but it's typically people see issues with the tyrosine hydroxylase enzyme, which is a reason why they don't get that turnover of dopamine, uh, dopamine into um, oh, I'm sorry, tyrosine into dopamine properly, and then eventually dopamine into norepinephrine. Um, so in these two areas of the brain, uh, where you're going to get the activity of increased dopamine. These are also the parts of the brain that you do see the action of dopamine being increased during addictive drug use. So, um, you know, cocaine, amphetamines, this is where the dopamine really increases in these areas of the brain. So you think about it, bromantane is increasing dopamine in these areas of the brain that these illicit drugs are also increasing dopamine. So I'm not saying that, oh, hey, uh, you know, bromantane can take the place of a cocaine or something like that. By the way, I don't think using cocaine is a good idea or amphetamines is a good idea. But what I am saying is that if, you know, if you are using bromantane for the purpose of maybe replacing those drugs or you've used, you know, some kind of drug like that and you re you've got a benefit out of it bromantane can maybe give you not a similar effect but a very comparable effect that again isn't going to give you the addictive properties or the overstimulative properties um or really the brain damaging properties um which do include down regulating the production of dopamine that those um drugs are going to give you you also get a rise of dopamine in the hypothalamus uh via upregulation of um, tyrosine hydroxylase, mRNA. So what does that mean? So in your hypothalamus, you'll start getting some dopamine production. Your hypothalamus is going to work better, which is going to give you a neuroendocrine effect. So we're talking about your endocrine system. So we're talking about, um, we're talking about hormone production. So if you need better performance out of hormones, um, this might be a helpful thing. In fact, I have seen some anecdotes, uh, anecdotes online of people using bromantane and having, um, sexual benefits from it, um, increase in libido, increase in sexual performance. Um, but r also, you know, bromantane's, one of Brom uh, bromantane's most popular uses is its, uh, is its GABAergic um, mediation. So it's going to promote the synthesis of GABA transporters. And this is what's going to give you um, a lot more of that anxiolytic benefits, that mind calming benefits, because it's in the absence of GABA that you start to experience a lot of this, you know, social discomfort, anxiety, stress. Remember, GABA calms the mind. And so the more GABA that you have, not to say like you should just take a GABA supplement and flood your brain with GABA, but if you can use a bromantane that's going to naturally boost. Uh, GABA synthesis and GABA transporters, you know, that's a good thing to do. Um, it's also an, a potent fighter of oxidative stress and inflammation. Inflammation, of course, being tied to depression, less inflammation, less depression. And, uh, you know, one thing I don't hear a lot of people talk about, but this was an interesting thing that I found, is that coming back to anxiety, uh, bromantane uh, normalizes the benzodiazepine site specifically of the GABA receptor. So, you know, this is what benzodiazepines do. This is what prescription anxiety drugs do. It's doing a very similar action to what uh, to what prescription anxiety drugs do. So um, again, the best use of bromantane is really for anxiety. And we know so many people are dealing with anxiety to some level. I deal with my own anxiety, which is why I love 
you know, I really enjoyed learning about bromantane because it, it seems like something that in the future I might, <laughs> I might have to use. Um, and if you deal with anxiety, this might be a great, this might be a great nootropic for you. Um, you're also going to get increased mental energy, increased focus, increased motivation. In fact, this was tested in a phase two clinical trial for the treatment of neurath uh, neurasthenia. So they took uh, 728 patients diagnosed with asthenia uh, in 28 clinical centers around Russia. Uh, they took between 50 and 100 milligrams and results were seen in as little as three days. And at one month, they still uh, one month after cessation of uh, bromantane, they still saw these people getting these great results, which included anxiety, depressive spectrum disorders, autonomic dystonia, and sleep disorder. Uh, sleep disorders. In fact, because they were taking this, or while they were taking this, nobody had any sleep disturbances reported. So, um, so really, really robust data there. Um, and you know, you're looking at like how does this happen again? It's probably because of the catecholamine production. It's probably because of, you know, the dopamine being produced, the serotonin being produced, the, um, the norepinephrine being produced, but also, you know, you're getting that GABAergic effect. Um, so like I said, anybody who's, who would, who would this be good for? Um, you know, anybody dealing with anxiety, that's like first and foremost who I would take this. If you're just looking for something that you think want to, you know, you want to boost your memory, boost your focus. I don't think this is a great, um, substance for this. Although when it comes to like, why do people use Adderall? They use Adderall to boost dopamine, to boost focus. Maybe this might play into that. So you could try to get it uh, for, you know, to help you with focus. But I'd say this, the best case use of this is, um, is if you, someone who deals with anxiety, deal with social anxiety and social situations, it probably could make you a little bit more, uh, a little bit more loose, a little bit more fluid, especially if you're somebody who's like, Hey, I quit drinking, but I still want to go to bars. I still want to go to the club. I still want to, you know, go on dates, but, and go out to drinks, but not drink. This could be a great thing for that. If you want to do a lot of networking, maybe you are, you know, new in a school, new in, uh, in a, you have a new job. You want to, you know, get in tight with coworkers you want to be someone who feels outgoing, this could probably be a very helpful uh, nootropic for that. Um, dosing, I would say, you know, it seems like, like I said, in that one study they showed between 50 and 100 milligrams, both were very effective. Um, I'm more of the belief of go low, go slow. There's no use in taking 200 milligrams of this right off the bat. You know, that might be too much, in fact. Um, again, they did not see any side effects with high doses, but why go high dose? Um, the two sources that I told you between uh, Cosmic Nootropics and Swiss Chem, they're sold in 25 milligrams and 50 milligram doses. So I think you could probably get away with just, hey, start with 25 milligrams, see how you feel, do that for a week then jump up to maybe 50 milligrams if, you know, see how that's going. Um, but really, I don't think there's any real reason to go above 75 milligrams. If you're at 75 milligrams of this and you're not feeling the effects of it, then you probably have to take a step back and, you know, go back to the holistic principles that I talk so much about. How's your blood sugar regulation, especially, especially with something like anxiety and depression? How's your gut health? Um, are you, uh, you know, are you having any gut disorders? Are you properly digesting your food? Does your diet consist of nutrient rich whole foods or are you still eating a lot of the processed stuff? Are you having multiple cheat days where eating pizza and ice cream and all this stuff, getting a lot of that toxicity in? How's your relate, you know, like your natural relationships? How's your sleep going? Are you wearing an O ring or a whoop strap and checking your heart rate while you sleep, getting enough deep sleep, getting enough REM sleep? All of these things factor in as well. So again, you can't like pill, tincture, powder your way, nootropic your way into great mental health. If you're to, if you need high dose of this, you need to kind of reevaluate what's going on in these other ends. But if you've got that base settled and you just need that extra 15 to 20% to kind of get you there, this might be a great, bromantane might be a great nootropic to try. And I'd love to know what you think. Have you tried bromantane? Do you know a lot about bromantane? Um, are you curious about bromantane? Have you taken bemethyl or any other active protectors? Let me know down in the comments below. Also, if you are interested in uh, learning more about nootropics, head on over to holisticnootropics.com. Check out our nootropics finder right there on the homepage. And for all things holistic nootropics, biohacking, holistic health, head on over to holisticnootropics.com. Get my free supplement buying guide. That's all for today, everybody. Thanks so much for watching and listening. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.